Greetings, semi-human meat people. How are you all doing? Hope you're well. Let's see who we got lurking. I can see that we have a Pond of Pimpin and Darius. And we have a Davex unit, Elevator Simulator, Infinicil, and our Primus, uh, and Zanaki Bear. Zanaki Bear? Not too sure. Hello, though. Um, right. Today is going to be brought to you by the letter Caffeine, and um, it's going to be a complete mess. So, yeah, I'm a bit all over the place at the moment. I am filling myself up with uh, darkness right now to keep me going. Um, if I need to run, like, th there's a small possibility that I will just disappear from this stream at some point. It shouldn't happen, but if it does, it'll be related to the fact my partner was in hospital this morning. And, uh, yeah, so if I leave, there's a reason. Uh, but hopefully not. Hopefully we'll be playing with Keppel the whole time. Um... Cool, but first, distraction straight away. Also, enjoy this scene. We probably won't be seeing it for very long because we'll be breaking Keppel. Um, but this is this is our stuff from last week. A little bit of bloom. Uh, we're going to revisit this stuff because I'm not very happy with the results so far. Um, one of the things I definitely want to do, which I have played with before, but we, have, we didn't do in our implementation, is to... Uh, render the scene down sample and then doing the blurring on the down sample version and then additive blend that back together so you get like a broader reach with less like it's a it's a lower quality um but we'll do the job um cool what else is going on there's advertisements before my stream well good luck trying to monetize this it would not work um, one thing I did want to distract us with, though, is I have had a small bit of time to play, and I'm working on my type checker still. Um, the goal of this checkmate library will be to allow people to make uh, type checkers for s lispy subsets. Um, and so what it allows you to do, it gives you a bunch of functions for defining. Let's just bring up the back end. Where's my test? What do I call this? Impulse. Um, it gives you some functions for creating types, um, or at least defining um, what is valid inside the designator for a type, um, and then you kind of provide your own macros and things like this to, to use the system. So let's have a look. Um, there's probably some stuff here. So make ttype spec, for example, is one of these functions. Um, you can you define at first a where is it? A type system you just give it a name um, and then there's methods that specialize on this and these are the basically the hooks into the system so um, get type spec the, is when the, the type checker wants uh, has a designator and wants you to return um, the correct type the correct specification for that type um, and there's parameters and constraints which I'll go into a second but I'm, I'm working on this. It's a kind of a long-term project, but um, it'll be out eventually. But I got something working, so I actually wanted to show it, just because it makes me happy. Um, so, details aside, let's say um, you want to like this is how you would define a type in this system. So this is defining an integer. This is defining a boolean. Um, you can also attach just custom arbitrary data to the specification for the type. So there's um, when it's type checking, it's going to make many instances of the type. Um, that's instances of an object that represents the type, not an instance of the type. So if you have integer, there'll be a lot of integer objects, not say one, two, three, for example. And so you can stick arbitrary data there and it can be used later on. I'll come back to this. Um, then also I wanted to have types which have parameters. So in, um, in common list, we're used to things like uh, simple array of, I don't know, um, integer, and then we can specify dimensions, say one by one, two. So this would be a 2D simple array of integers. And I wanted people to be able to use this kind of syntax, but to provide their own kinds of data here. So this is not the same integer as this. This is, is an integer that can be used inside a type designator, which is a, a symbol or list that names um, a type. And so um, then we can see the definition of another type down here, the unordered set, um, which takes two arguments. So think of it like simple array, um, a type and a size, and where size is integer, 
Um, if you don't specify right now what kind of par the parameter is, um, <coughs> it'll default to something like this. Um, so type is a type and size is an integer. Um, and this integer here is referring to this one. So by defining this, uh, we're able to say, hey, this argument is one of these. And it's gonna, when you provide a value to this type, it's gonna check that it's valid by running integer p on it, uh, the normal common list function. And it needs a function to be able to compare um, whatever these parameters are. So in this case, we just use uh, equal. Um, and so yes, we have an unordered set. Um, we also put this same custom data here. It, we'll get to what that is in a minute. And then um, I defined a constraint. And a constraint is just a predicate that is going to run when, um, when the type checker unifies types, when it works out what the type of something is. Um, it then is going to check to see if a bunch of constraints hold, potentially if people have provided uh, constraints. Hey, I'm Etienne, yeah, good to see you. I will be um, over here again soon. So um, I've defined this kind of constraint. I've just called it disposable because it was the first thing I thought of. Um, and um, to the predicate it runs to check if the date if the type satisfies um, is this is disposable function here so this function gets called um, with a with a type um, and then it's going to check to see if that type is valid so it's a bit hacky at the moment but what it does it, it looks at that type reference it gets the custom data which is this stuff here and it just is um, searches to see if there's a symbol called disposable um, inside implements. So yeah, it will be checking this list. So you'll see the um, integer here doesn't have any custom data um, with that A list, uh, but Boolean and unordered set do. And there's, a, there's another one down here of just playing with uh, different kinds of arguments. Um, and then right down the bottom, uh, we can see a function down here. So this is a top level function. Um, and this is the first time we see this kind of thing. So when you have a type in this system at the moment, again, all of this is up to be changed. But um, if you have a type um, name and you put a question mark at the front, it means it doesn't know what this type is. This is something to be solved. Um, so it takes one argument A of some type that we're just calling A for now, um, and then it returns that argument. So this is the identity function, essentially. And then up here, uh, we've got a lot more kind of um, complicated uh, thing. So let's see, did I, I probably actually haven't loaded this um, this thing yet. Let's, uh, well not in package, QL, uh, quick load, static all. Let's see if that's gonna load, yep. Um, and then probably want to go to, actually yeah, in package. Um, statical impl and then hopefully it can just do this this might work it might not okay yeah there we go so what we're saying is using um, we have to create a checking context if we're going to call infer it's, it's basically saying infer the type of this um, expression we've got a fun call to a lambda and the lambda is taking two arguments it's got an unordered set of something um, and it's got ten of those so, so an unordered set of some type a and then a second argument, which is of type of this same type as well. So these need to be the same. And then we're putting a declaration here saying whatever A is, it has to satisfy um, disposable. And then we've got a couple of calls to functions just to show that this um, got properly generalized. Um, and so yeah, the result ends up being um, this thing saying truly the, like so the result of this whole expression here um, is gonna be a Boolean. Uh, this construct function here um, is is basically a uh, is something that your users wouldn't normally see, but it allows you to um, create. It allows you to say that this type, this expression here, has this type, um, regardless of what it actually is. So this is like saying construct um, an instance of one of these types. It's just so that because we don't have a function that returns an unordered set of boolean. I'm just using this so I've got some value I can pass in as the first argument. So we pass in an unordered set of boolean, uh, 10 booleans, and uh, the boolean t. And all this does down here is we can just see that we've got a, um, 
a typed AST, if you like. So down here we can see that um, the arguments. So it's worked out that obviously T is a Boolean and this fake thing, um, we've forced it to be an unwanted set of uh, 10 Booleans. Um, we can see that the um, lambda has the type uh, function from unordered set of 10 booleans and a boolean to a boolean. So that's this got solved because at the beginning it didn't know what A was, so it obviously managed to reconcile all that stuff. Um, we can see the satisfies is still in there. Um, and then it worked out that the expression in the center is just um, a boolean because this is a progen and the last thing is a fun call to the identity function, which we've called horse, uh, passing in a boolean. So, some progress, some progress on some stuff. Um, and I am going to get to that as well. Um, let's have a look. So, yeah. So there is some uh, type checkiness going on. Just to remove, if we remove the fun call, we can see that it can't actually work out what these are. So you can see that there is a, what you end up with is it's managed to work out that this expression is a function from an unordered set of something and something to a boolean. Um, so yeah, then when you use this, it can unify those arguments. So it's the start of a type checker anyway. I'm just super happy that that's starting to work. And now, finally, I'll actually pay attention to what's going on in chat. Sorry, guys. Okay. Um, an API changes. No way. Is this still Bloom? Um, no, today we're going to be hacking on uh, Keppel because I kind of need that. I need, I need an episode where I'm just hacking on that. It's less brain work for me. Um, there's 20, oh, there's 55 on Twitch. God damn it. Why didn't I do that? Sorry, I will go and fix that now. Um, it still means that things are going to be wrong, but at least I'll have a um, hacking on Keppel. Update information. Hopefully, people who arrive late will see that. Please fix a riot. Yes, done. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Right. Yeah, let's get rid of this type system stuff and let's get into Keppel. So, there. Um, let's bring our core. Oh yeah, there's something actually I am about to push. So let's push this now. This is support for being able to define um, what outputs from a fragment shader map to what attachments in an FBO. So uh, let me just bring up the rep and I can give a kind of vague example. So normally when we make an FBO, we can specify some attachments, maybe a depth attachment, and it just breaks, of course, because I'm in the wrong package. So this, so here we have an FBO with three color attachments and one depth attachment. Um, and we can write into this FBO. So let me just, uh, let's just call this temp zero, do that. And so to use that FBO, we would use with uh, something like with FBO bound. Um, and then we take that FBO that we just created and we call map G inside here with a bunch of arguments. And then everything that gets rendered uh, by the pipeline that we're mapping over is going to get written into this FBO. And if we go and look at our um, play with verts stuff, because we've got some examples of things there, play with verts, render, um, frag. Do we have anything that actually puts out multiple um, values? Yes, okay. So this fragment shader returns two values, a color and a bright color. That's where we did our high pass um, on our bloom stuff last week. And so, um, when rendering with the pipeline that's using this fragment shader, the this value is going to be written into attachment zero of this FBO, and this value is going to be written into attachment one. Um, but you might not always want that. You might want to um, have it set up in some different way. Um, and that wasn't, it's something that GL can do, and it was something Kevl couldn't do until I pushed this stuff in a minute. Um, what you can do now is you can specify draw buffers. And normally this is set to T, which just means use draw buffers actually right into the FBO. Um, it can be set to nil to turn some stuff off, but that's re very rarely done except in internals. But now you should also be able to specify, let's see if I actually exported that, because I'm not sure I did. 
Um, attachment. No. Uh, attach is attachment. Um, let's go on one second. The works. Keppel. Uh, package. Uh, oh, where will it be? It'll be in dot FDOs. Attachment. Pattern. Right, so if this function actually exists, which it is claiming it doesn't? Okay, fine. Um, let's recompile. Oh, yeah, recompile all the packages. Probably wasn't extern. There we go. Uh, extern? What language am I writing in my head today? Okay. Yeah, um, this function allows you to then just specify um, which outputs are going to be written where. So instead of Where's that um, render function? Instead of this being written to attachment zero and this being written to attachment one, maybe we want to write this to attachment three um, and this to attachment one. So then we would just do this. And that's all. Ba basically all you need to do. All this actually does is create a um, simple array of um, unsigned byte 32, but it's just nice to dress this up. Also, if you use this in line inside an, uh, with FBO, um, there's some opportunities for Keppel to do some optimization, so it will. So that is now available, so I just need to push that actually, and seen as we haven't exported that attachment pattern, let's do that now. Okay, hopefully that's all right. Fuck off. There we are, good. Um, so, We've actually got something shipped for Kepler already. What I would like to work on today um, Yeah, you're right, Matty, and I should have a episode 56 push, shouldn't I? So let's do this. Episode um, 56. Boop. Episode 56. Up to origin. Off you go. Um, there are two things I'd like to try and get through today. I'd like to Unify a bunch of um, code that we've got for dispatching draws. Um, and I would like to start implementing, at the very least, the um, multi-draw dispatch stuff uh, we had. We, we started designing in episode 44. I think it was 44. Um, so yes, we will we will dig into this. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a code heavy and not the most followable episode, I expect. So do shout. I mean, obviously, shit post away in, in chat and feel free to ask me questions and I will try and keep an eye. I've got the chat down here as well, so I should see it. Um, yeah, and so I'm just going to get hacking. And for those who might not have been along to these um, or would like some information, please do ask questions. I'm, I'm quite happy to derail the episode to go and do things. Um, just let me know. Code. Right, let's do it. So there is a GL function. Um, right, there is a macro um, in here um, which expands all the drawing code. So when you when you have a pipeline, like this one, Compose Bloom, bloom P line here, if we macro expand this, we see it makes a whole ton of code. Um, and this is the code that um, is going to call the Vario compiler and um, work out where the uniforms are and set up those uniform bindings when it compiles the program and all this kind of stuff. And we also have um, in this big chunk here is the actual um, code that dispatches the draw. Um, so there's a ton of stuff in here. I know this is kind of hard to read, so I'll bring it up a bit. Um, but there's conditions for um, if there's any fragment stage at all, um, if there is um, actually binding the VAO from the um, buffer stream, the um, if there's an instance count, um, then we're going to be doing instance rendering. So there's a whole chunk of code here that's to do with instance rendering. Uh, no, wait a second. No, th this is if instant count is zero, we have this branch, uh, which is drawing with no instances, and then this branch down here, which is drawing with instances. We want to unify all of this, um, 
and there are functions for doing that. So rather than draw elements instance, um, we're going to go and what? No, uh, gl draw elements instance. We want to find um, a function with the kind of broadest functionality that covers everything that we've been doing, and um, use that instead. I'll see how that goes. Um, so I think let's have a look at draw elements. I thought there was ones with like base vertex and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. So draw elements, base vertex. Draw elements instance. Is there an instance with base vertex as well? Does that make sense? Um, we'll see. We'll see. Kids, did someone say shit post? Yeah, man, you're in your element now. Um, episode 56 push got derailed. No matter yet, I pushed it to Keppel because we're working with Keppel today. Um, but uh, I haven't pushed. I pushed a bunch of uh, fixes to episode 55. So the bloom stuff should work. I, I've only got it in the background so we have something to look at and uh, break when um, when I do anything, it's gonna break. So yeah. Let's have a look. So there are a family of functions like this and I want to use them. The base vertex thing is interesting. The reason, so I, I wanna unify all this stuff and then we're gonna be looking at um, the multi-draw stuff. So GL um, multi-draw. Which, for those who have forgotten or weren't here, um, this is all part of indirect rendering, which allows you to specify, um, rather than um, setting up the GL state for the draw, you pass in a struct which describes some of the state, a small amount, and then, um, yeah, it, do it does the draw using that instead. Multi-draw allows you to specify a whole array um, describing a whole bunch of draw calls and dispatching them all in one go. And by doing this, you can get much higher draw call counts um, if you're again, rendering from the same buffers and using the same uniforms and all this kind of stuff. Um, it's really nice for when you can't use instancing because you're not drawing the same thing tons of times, um, but you can, um, you can still batch these things up. Let's have a look. So. Well, this guy is a multi draw array indirect. Is there anything? Okay. This. This looks like the beefy function. I knew it was mentioned around here. So. It's saying that basically multi draw array is indirect is like calling this a ton of times. This function. Ah, shit. It's only available in 4.2 and up. Balls. Well, that screws some things then, because this will be the function that I want to use because it allows us to express a whole bunch of stuff. It allows us to specify um, the number of instances. Oh no, number. Of, sorry, this is the number of indices. Where's the instance one then? I mean, so let's just specify base instance. Oh, the number of instances is print count. Okay. So yeah, let's specify the number of instances. Let's you specify the um, the offset into the any per instance um, data that you are mapping over. Um, it lets you specify the starting index in the um, arrays that you're uh, mapping over as well. Yeah, it's kind of cool, um, but it seems it's only four point two and up, which is a real fuck up for Keppel because we support three point two and up. So it's, it seems like we're still going to have some branching. Let's go and have a look what these are. So, okay, so this one, this uh, draw elements instance, um, obviously is, is um, available on a low version. Let's just go and see. It's probably one of the ones we're using already. Um, yeah, we're using draw elements instance here. Um, no, fuck off. Right, and we have draw elements base vertex as well. So that's a non-instance thing. We haven't exposed base vertex yet, I don't think. In capital? 
that is something I need to look into, whether we do that. Um, So facial index specifies a constant that should be added to each element um, of indices when choosing elements from the enabled vertex array. Yeah, I don't think we expose this. So probably won't worry about this right now, which would allow us to use this. Basically, even when we're not going to be doing instancing, we're gonna use the instanced versions of these. Um, and we'll just spe specify the instance count to be one in that case. So let's have a look. What's going on? Many answers. Oh, I saw, uh, no worries. Uh, I thought it saw an episode 55 in your reacts. Quite likely. <laughs> I don't know what I'm, I've got there. Yeah, that'll be the episode 55 will have been from um, Playing With Birds. Cool. It says, you know the old list. I should really read. Now you're in full shit both mode. I should really read what you're saying before I read it out loud, but fuck it. Uh, you know the old list added to any sufficiently large project, programming project implements a list of some form. You've implemented your own list yet. Uh, I mean, the uh, Barrios list to GLSL, so it's its own little, um, its own little dialect. Can't you implement features and disable them for those who can't use them? Definitely. Um, but we've already got, to, oh, this stuff actually works already. But the thing that I don't like is the fact that we're having to do all this branching. Well, yeah, we've, we've got, we've got uh, two sets of um, ifs here. And if we can combine these things, I rather we did. Um, so yeah, that, that's really all I'm um, I wanting to do is combine these branches. So there's a little less indirection and um, we're moving into a place where it's easier to um, implement the multi-draw stuff. I thought I was gonna be able to do it by just making everything use this. And if you weren't using instancing, you would just set prim count to one. Um, if you weren't using base index, you would just set that to zero and everything else would just kind of work. But our 4.2 limitation is there. If we, um, you don't know what GL version you're using on a given machine until it's running. So you, we can't, um, we, would, we would still have to have an if for that that's being checked on every draw. At which point we're doing pretty much the same thing as this again. We would have two nested ifs with a couple of branches. Um, it's a bit of a bummer. Um, if we knew it at compile time, we could just omit the correct code just for that thing. And that would be great, but we don't know that unfortunately. Um, So yeah, kid, it's, it, it is a whole bunch of work, but it will totally, I mean, it's Keppel's job to do a whole bunch of work um, in places that we can and we can make it fast. But I don't think we have that in this case. But what we can do is we can get rid of this, um, this thing here. We can get rid of this. Um, we can take instance count. So let's have a look at where that is coming from. It's up here. So what we can do is we can say, let's have a look. Right, so that's pulling the current instance count from the, the uh, context, the Keppel context. Um, so what we could just do really is we can just say instance count, we can move the if up here. So if, um, I don't think we need to specify that this is a C array index because this here is going to, oh yeah, we've got fucking, yeah, commas in here. We can't expand this uh, because we're still in, we're defining the macro. Um, I don't think we need to define this anyway. I think if I jump to core context and then the types, we go and find the context object and look for the instance count. We can see it's type is already uh, C array index. And seen as this is going to expand in just into a, just a, um, a struct um, slot access, 
uh, SPCL at least is going to know what this type is anyway. So I don't think we need this. We can just say if it's 0, 1, otherwise um, this. Now, of course, we've got an if here now that we would rather not have. So what we could do is we could say that instance count is always 1 um, unless it's set to something else. So we should look into that. But this will at least give us our first step. So instance count is now always 1 or higher. And now that means this whole branch here is never going to get used. Um, so now I just want to make sure that everything we've got here um, makes sense. We've got some local declares, which we don't have down here. I guess they're not there because I was lazy. Um, safety zero. Yeah, so th that's why it's local, because we don't use safety zero very often, unless we're absolutely sure of what types we're getting out of things. Um, so I'm pretty sure at this point. Um, and then we've got draw mode, the buffer stream length, the CFI type to GL type. Really? We're calling that dynamically? That sucks. We have to replace that. Yick. That's going to be a shit function. Oh, look at that. It's disgusting. Okay, so that's for a limited set of things, but that that the fact that there's this case function being called in here, I hate. That it needs to be replaced. Wherever it's getting index type from, that need that object needs to cache whatever the result of this is. And then um, buffer stream start byte is here. What's this for? Indices, yeah. And then um, instance count is here, which will be one. So, okay, we're just going to take this locally stuff and move it down here. And we are going to get rid of this and thus this as well. Okay, so we got, so we took a couple of, we took those couple of ifs and now we've actually just split them up really, so um, still requires two ifs. Let's go back to render and see if this compiles. Okay, so no warnings so far, which is good. I don't actually think we're running at the moment, because um, I think if we hit an error earlier yeah let's just say play um, yeah so now we're back in business let's recompile everything and render yep everything still runs that's good and no warnings so I'm all right with that so far um, but there's two things I want to get rid of I want to get rid of this if here so I want instance count always to be one, um, um, or a, at least one. It's going to be one or more. And then I want um, this horrible piece of shit to go away as well. Um, Pop and saying, so Bacchus, do you test your code on different machines and configurations, or do you do um, every single normal, or do you do like every single normal programmer just push because it works on my machine? We'll see. Uh, a bit of both. A bit of both, to be honest. Um, I have um, a far too small uh, test suite um, for Keppel, so it runs a bunch of tests. Um, and I have the Keppel examples, um, which if you look down here, that's a pre-release run script, and it basically just runs all of the examples one after another. So what I do before a release, I will um, I will load the different projects uh, with verbose and force on in uh, SPCL, CCL, and ECL, and make sure that there are no warnings. And um, once it's completely free of warnings, I make sure all the tests pass on all of those. Um, and again, it's like it's not it's not great, but it's better than nothing. I normally catch some things doing that. Um, but yeah, ECL is almost unusable because it's just so slow um, with the default setup. Um, I can't remember, there's some things you can change that 
um, get the uh, generated code to be much faster. But yeah, it's still tricky. So um, normally it's uh, SBCL and CCL get the full set of tests and the full set of examples run. And I at least get to see something there. What I don't do, unfortunately, is I don't have um, performance um, tests. So I don't have any, like, just run this stuff as fast as possible and time it. Um, I would like that because some of the things we're changing here are for performance reasons. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So let's jump back to here and say grep and just see where instance count is used. Hopefully it's not too many places. No, pretty simple. Okay, so the first thing, actually, let's just um, do this. So say always use um, instance draw functions. Um, we're going to change this to one. And oh yeah, this episode is going to have a lot of restarting the session because because this is a struct. When I recompile it, it did not complain. That's interesting. Okay, so you can you can change default values, but you can't change types. Okay, never mind. That's fine. Uh, but we probably will be restarting the um, image quite a few times because we're going to make modifications to structs, and obviously, that is not allowed. I mean, it is. Yeah. It, it's it, the implementation is allowed to do a lot of things that mean just arbitrary recompiling is not safe. So let's get Gret back up. Um, that use is just for the with the capital context slots. That's just a helper macro that I use in a bunch of other code. Um, this is the pipeline stuff we just looked at. So the goal is to get rid of this. We want that to be gone. Um, in fact, we'll compile this now. Yes, because this is a macro, this isn't going to affect anything until we recompile the things using um, depth pipeline. So that's okay. Um, so now we've got a few things. We've got, there's a use of instance count here. There's instant count mentioned there. Instance count is mentioned there and there. Good. So that's the only things in depth pipeline are just usage, usages of that number. And now we've got um, GPU pipeline base. Okay, so this again is, uh, so this is the definition for with instances. And the way we normally use that is we go with instances um, a thousand, um, and then you do a bunch of stuff. And then any rendering, if you do like a map G in here, so map G, uh, etc. This is going to be rendered with instances. So you'll get a thousand, effectively like a thousand calls of this. Um, but obviously handle by the GPU, so it's nice and fast. So this is where we get to set this. So all this does, actually, if we bring that back, we can have a look at it. Let's get rid of these dots because it's not going to like trying to map this down those. But, bah. So this expands to this. It grabs the capital context. Um, this has a voodoo magic in it to make sure that if you do it inside a block where it's someone's already, if you use with capital context inside another with capital context, it grabs the uh, context from the outer one um, and uses it all the way down. Um, this minimizes the number of times we have to go and get the context, which really matters in kind of dense chunks of uh, capital E code. Um, yeah, that's an optimization thing. Uh, then we get the instance count from the context itself. We set that this is going to be the new value. Um, is going to be a thousand. The old one is whatever we got out of instance count here. Then we set instance count. Um, oh yeah, we set th this is obviously like because this is going to end up being. Um, like with slots, not with slots, what am I thinking of? Um, a symbol macro, let's have a look, let's just expand this. There we go. Symbol macro let, here we go, instance count. So set this to be the new value, and then we've got an unwind protect where we do whatever the body is, and then we set it back to the original value. So what we want to do is we want to do our if here. We want to say if, um, Yeah, so down here, 
in this bit. We've got the new value, so tweet. And then we'll say tweet is if um, equals zero, um, then we set it to one. Otherwise, we set it to yes. I think that is fine. Is there anything wrong with that? No. So if you try and set it to zero, because zero is a valid thing to say um, for the number of instances. <laughs> Bob the pit. Cunt and old cunt really look like Australia abbreviated code. Yeah. If it makes me chuckle, it's good. <laughs> I need these little things as I'm going through the code base. Um, it's either that or G count, which is just boring. Counts and old counts. Right, so... Um, Where's that dirty kiwi today? I miss him. Wherever you are, Barrett. Why aren't you here? We need you. Um, right. So, yes, we basically move this if to here, um, which is good because you're gonna like you're gonna have a a lot fewer um, with instance uh, blocks than you are gonna have draw calls. So moving that out means we get a lot less, a lot fewer ifs. So let's do that. Let's compile this and recompile, uh, re-expand the macro. We can see if we set it to a thousand, then we've got this check. If this is equal to zero, then make it one. Um, of course, I can just put this in a function. Uh, deep on black. We compile this. It's like, okay, MapG is complaining because these things don't exist, and that's fine. Um, but even though this code looks slightly redundant, it's not gonna be a problem because in this case, um, when we've, we've set the value explicitly, obviously the SPCL compiler and any sensible compiler is going to um, do a constant propagation. And so then it's gonna go, if this, like, it would do, oh, I can't, I can't uh, edit this because this is an expansion, but this will become a thousand in all these places. And then it will be able to see that a thousand is never equal to zero. So it's always gonna do this. And this whole block of code is gonna go away. So this is never gonna cost us something when it doesn't have to, and that's fine. So I'm all right with that. So basically, that's to the tweak to with instances we need, and we can see that all of these 664, 666, 667, 669 are all in this block. So this is 670, 661. So that's it. That's all of the places instance count were used. Um, so let's just recompile this file. Let's go up to here again and recompile this, because why not? And here we've already compiled everything. So that should be the fix, to be honest. Um, I want to go back here just to make sure that we did get rid of that if. Cool. Um, all right, that's probably the first, that's probably the first step. Let's have a look at what the change actually involved. Um, very little. The default is now one. And because you can only set instance count with the with block, it's gonna be one, it's gonna be whatever the value is inside the block, and then it's gonna to return to one. Um, just always, so I think we're fine there. And yeah. Then we'd, we've removed an if from every single draw call, which matters when there's lots of them. Um, this should be good. So now we're gonna see why I'm wrong. <laughs> so kill the image, um, let's do this, let's do, um, so now we're going to do ASDF load system rather than using quick load um, and we're going to load Keppel and we're going to say force is true and verbose is true um, and this is going to go through and dump a whole lot of stuff. Um, what this will do is guarantee that if there are any warnings in any, like anywhere, um, they will be in this um, code here. So it's printed out 99 notes. Most of these are gonna be um, efficiency stuff. I don't worry about notes, but I try to make sure that we n I never ship anything with warnings. No errors, no warnings. That's the, uh... so we just go back through here and, oh, come on, we don't want anything selected. Warnings. I'm just going back through to see if there are any warnings. Okay, so here's one. Um, and this is in pass float, which I didn't write. 
this is in IE floats, which I didn't write, and this is in CLPCRE, which I didn't write as well. So it seems like Keppel at least is loading without warnings, which is nice. Um, it's just a quick check to, um, yeah, it'll bring up more things, and that's also what QuickLisp does when it um, when it's checking whether your project will go into QuickLisp on each release. It's going to do a um, a kind of forced load. So any warnings you've got will disqualify your uh, package from remaining in QuickLisp. So it's worth checking this stuff. Um, you probably already do, but uh, you know, I'll teach you how to suck eggs. Why not? Okay, so we don't need checkmate. Let's just get with play with verts. Because if this still works, it's a at least an indication that we're on the right track. If this is fucked up, um, then we're gonna have to be careful. Now, because we were dealing, we were making edits to a bunch of macros. We're less likely to see any error in what we've changed. What we changed was very simple, um, but it's it's when that macro is used lots of places and expands, then we're going to get fuck ups. So yeah, that's uh, that's where we'd expect to see problems. Everything's gone quiet in chat since I started saying "cunt." This is when I find out that Twitch is just like, "Oh no," just like shut down the stream. Um, right, so let's go play with verts, and we should be able to just do play start. Hopefully, hopefully, this will run. Yeah, good. Okay, so it's not guaranteed that this is correct, but it's a pretty good sign. So let's reset FBOs so it actually doesn't look like garbage. Garbage. And there's our little blooming sphere. Oops, there we go, cool. So, progress. And now if we go back to render, and we go back to our pipeline that we looked at before, probably this one, um, we can see down in here that, where is it? Here's where we get instance count. And then we have one if just to check if we're doing um, a ray, uh, draw arrays or draw elements, basically if we're using an index array. And that's it. So we've got one if now. That's ju it's just going to be a bit better. Less branches equals good in general. So that's one down. Um, I can't co like get things any smaller, which is annoying because we can't use that function that is. Um, GL 4.2 and up only. What I could do, and it's something I'm musing over once Keppel is done, um, is to have different versions of, so like you can quick load Keppel or you can quick load Keppel greater than 4.1 or greater than 4.2. And when you're doing that, then we could assume loads of things. And basically there's a bunch of ifs in various places we could get rid of, which would be kind of cool but I don't know how uh, useful that's going to be. So I'm not doing it yet. Um, there's a lot of other work we can do that's going to be valuable before then. Okay, so the next thing is the actual like thing that we looked at last time, which is multi-draw arrays indirect. Oh, what was the other thing? Oh yeah, the, the reason I'm doing some of this, um, I'm going to try and do at least one stream per month, which is just hacking on Capital. Um, let me know if that doesn't work for you guys, if you don't enjoy these as much and you'd rather it be a little less frequent. Um, but for me, I'm really feeling, I'm really feeling that kind of a uh, strain with Keppel recently. I, I, there's a whole bunch of stuff still to do. And we've got some time here where we can blast away on a few features. And I really want to get multi-draw indirect in. I want to get bindless textures in. I want to get um, uh, sparse texture support so you can control memory residency across textures in. There's, there's some, fundamental features that we still don't have. There's a lot of bugs and things I still need to do. Like I, I, I've got a branch for completely reworking um, pixel upload and stuff like this, because that's just shit in capital. I mean, it works, but it works poorly. You know, I didn't understand it well enough. So um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm wanting to just push on really hard and try and get as many features, as much of the GL API covered as possible. And then we'll just kind of, uh, then I can just chew on bug fixes and all that kind of stuff. 
so that's what I'm thinking. Let me know. Obviously, chat people are. It's easy to let me know right here. Um, but if you're watching this on YouTube or something like that, ping me. Let me know what's up, and uh, we'll work it out. But I'm thinking one a month will be nice for me. Okay, so. In the other stream, we did start doing a little bit of coding for this, but it was nothing substantial. So what I think I want to do is I want to have a... Excuse me. And we need to define this uh, indirect command type. We can do that inside careful, so it's always available. I would like to have something like map G. So probably um, rather than map G, it will be uh, multi map G. And you would specify the pipeline like normal. You would specify the uh, stream of data. So this will be the data stream. Um, and then you would specify, um, oh yeah, you'd specify uniforms as well. So two, one, and far, two, whatever um, but then you would specify an array and this would be the um, batch of things to dispatch so um, th sorry this would be the draw calls so draw call array or whatever they called it what was it um, yeah draw command array or something like this now I'm thinking that if this is a C array um, that we use um, this multi-draw uh, arrays indirect thing as usual. Um, and if it's a GPU array, there's a trick in here, which is really nice. Um, where is it? Yes, okay, so if you bind a buffer to a GL draw indirect buffer, then it can, it will read the contents of that buffer instead of um, reading from a like a CPU side array, which means you could use a compute shader to populate um, like a UBO or an SSBO of um, draw calls, and then you can dispatch that that set of draw calls with one command, and that is fucking crazy. Um, seen as we um, dress up buffers in a nice way, we've got uh, GPU arrays. I think that if you just pass in a GPU array, we should just bind that GPU, the, the buffer behind that GPU array to indirect buffer and then do the draw call. And it should just work, which would be sick. So, now time to implement this, I guess. So, do, 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 I'm gonna just grab all this because this is kind of our little, I don't know, our pseudo code for what we want, um, rough API design. Let's do core pipelines and uh, multi draw. Well, let's, um, okay, so we would like this is what the code needs to look like. Let's uncomment this and instead. No, actually, we'll leave this commented. It's fine. Let's do a def macro because it's gonna be one of them. Uh, multi map G and then, um, yeah, then we need to work out what this looks like. So what does map G look like? Map G. Sure. So there's a pipeline function, a stream, and the uniforms. Great. So let's do this. And instead, we're going to have a um, yeah draw command array. That's what we're going to pass in there. And do we need? Yeah, we do want this to be a macro, but. The reason map G is a macro in. Um, Keppel is it allows us to basically allows us to own the call site and it allows us to um, do some expansion of things that yeah it just gives a lot of control to Keppel 
and it means we can do things potentially faster. Um, yeah. So we're going to omit some code. This is going to be a program. And this is an interesting one. I wonder what this is going to exactly look like. So there's a few things we need to do. We need to set uh, which program we're using. We need to set um, which uniforms and everything are there. And we're gonna need to set up the VAO because that says what buffers and stuff we're reading from. Um, the VAO is like a, a buffer stream in Keppel is a VAO and a length, pretty much. Um, Oh, wait a, wait a second, I forgot something. There was something else. Oh yeah, there was something else on the to-do list, wasn't there? Uh, and that was back in pipelines. We've got that horrible call um, that I need to, I need to get rid of because it's just slowing things down. Yes, we'll get back to that. I, I would, see, I would file an issue for it, but right now I can't because my fucking, it's, it's been a weird few days. So my phone's died. Um, and it's always, as always, it's the uh, micro USB that's fucked up. Now if I plug it in, it starts smelling and burning, which is just great. So the, the uh, magic smoke has left it. So that's fucked. Um, but it has my um, two-factor auth stuff on it. And I don't have it on another device yet. So I only just realized that before the stream. So I need to go and reset up another one of those. I've got the backup codes and everything, so it should be fine. But still just, oh, I need to get a new phone. Oh, by the way, any um, Linux nerdy phones out there that I should be aware of? Um, there was some Lindev or something like this phone that looked kind of cool, but it's not going to be out until January and it's all Kickstarter-y and stuff. But uh, I think I'm going to end up with another Android phone. Um, definitely not touching iPhones. They're a pain in the ass. Darius is saying, uh, sounds like a good plan. Pomdipim supportive too. Thank you very much. Pomdipim um, source is saying, in some episodes, you introduce an agenda in the beginning of the episodes. Maybe for these Keppel hacking sessions. Maybe do it again. You may do it again. Um, now, I, I think I'm misreading this because I'm not entirely following. Introduce an agenda in the beginning of the episodes. Maybe for these Keppel hacking sessions, you may do it again. Could you, would you mind rephrasing that? I'm being really slow and I'm not quite following what you're saying. Um, I could definitely make these a bit more structured, probably. Uh, yeah, let me know. Uh, that sounds really feasible. Um, so what up? <laughs> Have a plan, in other words. <laughs> Have a plan? Yeah, sure, man. That does sound good. Uh, Medigan saying fair phone. Let's see what this is. Modular phone. Interesting. All right, that's, uh, I'll have a peek later. That's, oh, it was Librem, that was the other one, this guy. The Purism guys have done some hardware before and stuff like this, so it sounds feasible. It is a uh, HTML5 apps though, which is kind of blah. So I would like to get something else running on there as well for apps, but we'll see. We'll see. It'll probably be another Android phone, though, to be fair, because I need something pronto. Um, but thank you very much, Matiana. I will definitely check that out. Um, so what I was kind of hoping we would be able to do is we would use MapG. Um, we would specify the pipeline func. We would, we would set the stream to nil, because um, and we would set all the uniforms here. Now, the reason we would do this is that if you pass nil as the stream to map G, it will it will take that program and it will set all the uniforms in that program, but it won't dispatch a draw. And that's really handy. So this would allow us to basically set up um, a bunch of the states that we would want. And then I was hoping we would do something uh, for VAO, which I haven't worked out yet. And then we would do this. Um, is that the one I want? No, multi draw array, blah, 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 blah. This one. I just copy this actually. Um, three spaces? Yeah. So, um, 
Not that that made it any better, but whatever. Um, there's mode, there's indirect, there's um, draw count and stride. So that's interesting in itself. Um, the draw count is going to be, I guess, the length of the indirect array. Um, so this would be um, something like array total size. Uh, okay, so we don't have a. I guess we have a C array total size, but I guess we don't have a. Um, a GPU version of that? GPU array total size? No. Okay, so we'll need that as well. Um, we also would want to limit it to just be uh, one-dimensional arrays anyway. So there's that. Um, if we actually go and look at the GPU array type, there probably is some information for this already in here. Um, okay, so GPU array dimensions for sure. But in the buffer backed one, which would be the one we're using, um, let's have a look. Byte size, element byte size, offset in bytes and buffer, pixel format, access style, row alignment. No, okay, so we would have to get that. It's not, it's not just sitting in there waiting for us. But anyway, even if this was uh, first of um, dimensions um, and the, and the uh, what do we call it? The uh, command array. So let command array be draw command array. And then we would do Alexandria with Jensen's CMD ARR. So now we've got some Jensen's available. We would do this. This would give us a length. Um, we're going to be calling GL multi map. No, not multi map. What am I talking about? Um, multi draw arrays indirect. I fucking love CL open GL. It's so good. Um, oh yeah, I need to turn on slime enable okay, current hints. That's better. That's what I'm doing. Okay, so we need to know what mode is. Oh, this is this. Okay, that's fine. Um, GL points, line stripe, blah, blah, blah. That is available. I can't remember where exactly. I think that just, we take that from, there's a couple of places that can be specified actually. It can be specified in the um, pipeline itself and it can be specified in the stream. So we do need to get inside this, some information from this pipeline function. I think I can see where this is going, but we'll get to it mode. Let's just put a bunch of question marks here. Indirect um, would be the array. So we would need to split this up anyway. So we would need to say um, E type case um, CMD ARR. And this one would be for um, C array. And then we would have another one for um, GPU array BD, which is the buffer back GPU array type. Um, and then um, C, uh, ah, C array total size for um, CMD ARR and then we would have to get the stride information as well which I'm not entirely sure of where we've got stride and stuff yet we'll, um, we'll find that we would need a better version for this as well. To be honest, seeing as we, we should have a GPU array total size as well, there's no reason not to have it. Um, actually, we definitely would, would want to enforce that this, um, that this was a one dimensional um, array because our C arrays and GPU arrays have um, row alignment. Um, so when you, when you have a multi-dimensional array, uh, you might have padding at the end of every row. Uh, that's just a GL thing that happens that's involved with a uh, pixel upload and stuff like that. So we would need to um, assert is 1D array 
yeah, 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 yeah. Right, something like that. Um, the problem we're running into slowly here is that we need quite a bit of information and we still have this something for, so we need to bind the VA on. And a lot of the information to do that, I think, is actually down in our pipeline stuff here. Oh, what's that? Oh, that was just redefined. That's fine. Um, uh, VAO. Okay, so now let's just bring this up. So is it easier to look at here or is it easier to look at somewhere else? So basically, um, this function generates the code for um, the actual draw call part of um, the pipeline. So at some point it calls with VAO bound. But it just takes, actually, it just takes the buffer stream. That's kind of cool. So this part is actually probably fine. Oops, I didn't want to go here. I wanted to go to multi-draw, multi-pass. Um, something for VAO is with this. So that's nice and easy. But actually, we've got something, um, something, 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 uh, bind program. Because the problem is, uh, we map G here, which is going to bind the program, um, but ostensibly the, the program, um, the GL program is going to be bound and then it's going to be unbound um, at some point as well. Oh, I mean, it's getting unbound in here as well. So let's have a look for that. Um, da, 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 da. Program. Yeah, so we've got a call to use program. Actually, that's interesting. This is in init, not in. Okay, yeah, so this is the part of the code that actually um, creates the function. Uh, this looks a bit weird because um, what you can do in Kepler is you can say that a pipeline is static, which means it's never going to change, and then it will it will emit a bunch of uh, extra additional type information into this, uh, which is great because yeah, you know, a little more performance is always nice. I mean, anytime the compiler knows more things, it can do a better job. Um, but then at some point down here, we call use program and on the program ID. And the program ID is stored inside, um, basically, it's basically state that is closed over inside this program, as far as I remember. Yeah. So. Let's just see where this comes from. Yeah, so there is a, a state variable. There's a state object that is, we can imagine it's basically closed over with the pipeline. There's some details there because of threading and all this kind of stuff, but there is an internal state to the pipeline. Um, so we're not gonna know what the program ID is on outside of this, uh, outside of this code. <sighs> which means we actually need to bring this inside. Um, which is rather tricky. Because it means we're going to basically add more conditionals back again. It's a bit of a bummer. Let's, um, let's have a think about this. But first, more importantly, you people. Um, Darius is saying there is also this. Or oh, PDA. Oh, that's so adorable. Um, Indiegogo, CDN. Sure. Let's see if that'll let me get any further. Oh, bless it. Oh, it's got 4G. Ah, it's got 4G and Wi Fi and Bluetooth, but I guess no. Oh, no. Yeah, it's full mobile calls and all that kind of stuff. Ooh.
That is. I mean, that is disgustingly nerdy. I really like that. <laughs> it's, that is wrong. I would love to know. 12 hours of talk time, yeah. But yeah, it needs to be charged up a lot. Um, okay, so it's an Android thing. Okay. Ah, it's a Mali 875. Well, oh, sorry, Mali 875. It's some Mali GPU anyway. I need to have a look at what that is. To be fair, though, I don't you I don't play any games on my phones. The only thing I do like running is, is some media apps that would chug a bit. So I don't know. Um, I still want to be doing Fuse development, so I need a phone that can can uh, run GL at least. Uh, but yeah, this, this is an Android phone with a bunch of stuff jammed on it. That's you know what? That's actually interesting. I will. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have a look at that too. Oh, hideous! I love it. Um, Elevate Similar is also asking on any uh, on a similar but different note. Any opinions on laptops? Uh, my old mid two thousand and ten MacBook Pro is dying, and I want to get away from Apple's bullshit. Test my brother. Um, favorite at the moment is sorry, I'm just jumping screens again, so I'm looking at more at you people. Um, is the ThinkPad One Carbon series? Um, I mean, I'm very biased on laptops. They're kind of I would probably look. Like the razor blade stuff is kind of interesting, um, but they're they're ultra thin. Their their smallest one is kind of neat. Um, basically, I want a small laptop that can do GL type stuff in as well. So um, and to be fair though, like a lot of the Intel integrated cards are actually getting pretty good now. Their their um, drivers are getting better. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I'd probably, I would probably look at the Razer stuff, but I also don't mind fat laptops, so I would probably go for... There's a 12-inch Alienware, I think, now. Is it 12 or 14? Um, I would probably go for that in the end. Because I don't mind the thickness, I just need something that can do things. And I... I it's the only thing that's that capable at that size, it's really annoying. Um, but for now, I'm just going to keep on super gluing my little... I've got the... Oh, the, oh, the oh. M uh, M11X thing, and this is just oh, so much careful they've done on this thing. It's great. Um, needs to be glued back together every now and again, but that's uh, I got a bad batch. Oh, I got a second hand the ones that were being sold because they were better than bad batch. Pom the Pimp says, Keppel on phone. We could totally do that. I mean, like, um, ECL does run on phones, but it runs real goddamn slow. Um, so you would have to compile with all those other options turned on. Uh, which I ran into a few little issues with that. Um, then what else? We could use SBCL, but that's not really packaged up well yet. I would, I would there would be a bunch of work to get a nice um, dev environment using Lisp on phones. There's Mockle, but you pay a ton of money, and there's so little information. They feel very dead, even though apparently they're still there. Um, yeah. Darius is saying, oh yeah, the uh, razor blade stealth, but I don't want to make that, miss that track point anymore. Good point. Uh, yeah. Tell you what, man. Yeah, the... Um, yeah, the ThinkPads, they've got a really good name for a reason, I guess. They they're still seem to be really good Linux laptops. The problem I obviously always have with the... Uh, with my recommendation of the Alienware stuff as well is that um, you've probably got a dual GPU, which means you're going to fight to set that fucker up. But there are some good projects for making it better, but still, it's a risk. Oh, yeah, I'm not looking forward to getting into that, that whole game again. Um, but yeah, so uh, on this thing again, thank you so much, by the way, for the uh, advice from people. Um, that's, uh, I, I really will have a good look at those mobile devices later. Um, to be able to know what program to bind um, and ideally, and to get the mode information properly, we're going to need to be inside this pipeline function. Which means this is going to have to live inside there. Um, now, 
we don't want to have to hard code a pipeline to say whether it's going to be a multi-draw pipeline or not. I think that sucks because GL doesn't have that requirement on you. You, you don't have like, oh, this this pipeline is a multi-draw only pipeline. That's sorry, this is uh, GL program, a multi-draw only GL program. Um, so Keppel shouldn't have that limitation because GL doesn't. But it basically means we're going to have to put another if inside there. And also, and this is where having map G be a macro is going to be useful. Um, the, sorry, my brain's, my brain's fuzzing out on me for a second. I need to go and look at the expansion of one of these pipelines again. So if I just go like this, and there's a whole bunch of things in here. There's some uh, compiler macro stuff at the top. Um, does some checks. Um, there's some functions. Oh yeah, this defun just um, has a lot of. Uh, this is just set up so that um, the Keppel profiler stuff will work automatically with whatever pipelines you make. Um, there's a state object. There is a bunch of. This is the init function. Okay, so this is the init function which uses Vario to compile things. Here we go. We can see. I'm pretty sure. There we go. Compile, link, and upload. That's the bit that's going to call uh, Vario. Um, it's then going to go through, and we've got all of the things for setting up our uniforms, all kind of unrolled and sitting here. I mean, it doesn't need to be unrolled, but why not? Like we're already doing this stuff in a macro. Um, so it sets all those things up, transform feedback and all that kind of stuff. Then this is the this is the actual um, function that is named the same thing as your pipeline. So this is the one that actually does the rendering. And it takes a bunch of arguments. You never call this directly. Um, you always call pipelines with map G. But there is a context of some kind, a stream, and then the uh, keyword arguments. So when you're calling map G, map G is going to provide the context and then uh, just pass through those other things you specified. Um, lots of inlining, or just asking for inlining. Um, okay, let's have a look. Some things are ignorable just because of the different variations of things that the uh, macro can generate. Ah, so at what point, um, how do we know we're doing a multi-draw, basically? I mean, we're going to have to have an if. We're going to have to pass in. Um, I think, basically, this is going to take in another argument, uh, which will be the multi-draw array. Um, normally, that will be nil. So it, its type will be null or, um, what would it be? Null or CPU array or GPU array. Um, Elevate Sim is saying, yeah, that, um, so some, who was it mentioned earlier? Um, Elevate Simulator said, isn't Lenovo that Chinese company that had some fraudulent SSL certificates installed in order to look into your HTTPS traffic? Oh God, yeah, I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, apparently it was only their PCs, but pff, they would do that to their laptops just as much. Um, hopefully they've stopped that shit, but I wouldn't put a dime on it. Absolutely confident and agreed. Um, I mean, yeah, I suppose that's not going to hit you as bad if you're not using Windows anyway. Um, but yeah, if you're paying for it, you're just pay paying a company to be shit just because then you can work around it. Seems like oh, such a shitty thing. Sony rootkit comes to mind. Yeah, fuck Sony. Like, they're, they're, they're just, oh, problem people. Years and years of just being consistently a problem. Um, and yet, we still got a PS4 in the house. So, you know, I'm a hypocrite as well. So, yeah, I think we need to pass in two streams. We need to pass in the um, multi-draw stream and the regular data stream. Um, 
that will be handled by uh, MapG and MultiDraw, uh, MultiMapG, so that's okay. Um, and then we'll have to do everything inside here. I think that's how we're going to do this. Let's um, let's just follow that lead and see where it goes. So let's look for a stream. Okay, here we are. What is this? This looks like oh, this is for partial pipelines. This is uh, something else. So. So we're going to partial pipelines are ones where you have specified that one of the uniforms is a function type, which obviously GL can't do. Um, but in Keppel, we create a pipeline which you can then um, complete later. And we use this for our kind of, um, oh, what do we call it, uh, like Uber shader stuff. Then you can take an existing pipeline and bake in uh, a uniform. So we, we have uniform baking, which means you can take an existing pipeline specify a uniform and say it's always this and then we recompile we create a new pipeline with that thing hard-coded um, if you specify the type as a function you can then provide the gpu function that's going to be used in that place and we create a new shader with that gpu function in line which is cool so it's easy to generate uh, pipelines with specific functions injected inside it which is which is pretty cool um, but you can't map over a partial pipeline you can only map over a complete pipeline uh, so yeah so let's have a look. So we need to, we need to allow uh, draw stream. Let's just call it that. No, draw array. We'll see if it has to be a stream later. Let's do this. Um, and then where is stream mentioned? Oh yeah, return stream. We're going to ignore uh, draw array. Okay. And then we go map G context. There's gonna be one of these things down here. Oh, where are you? Okay, it'll be this. So wherever signature is created, that's where I want to be. Okay, so if it's static, uh, then we're able to specify types um, more completely. So we're going to... Um, oh, that's cute. Yeah, I suppose uh, like draw array is invalid if you're doing compute. That would make sense. Actually, would it? Because a compute compute shader is just I mean it's just a it's just a regular old pipeline, but you're just doing compute stuff in it. Um, I suppose you could queue up a bunch of compute jobs. It probably isn't something you want to do. I don't know. We'll have to look into that actually. But anyway, we don't need like this stream sim thing here. This is just so that um, I could specify that the stream is gonna uh, the stream argument is gonna be called space if it's a compute stage. Uh, sorry, compute pipeline and uh, stream otherwise. It's just so that the uh, it's, it's completely unnecessary to do this other than it makes the um, uh, what is it. Ah, it's just named more appropriately, so it's easier to read the uh, resulting code, I guess. So, but we don't need that bit here because draw array is just a draw array. Um, if it's types, then it's going to be or null or c array or uh, GPU array BD. Those are the only valid things there. And then down here, it's just going to be we're just going to call it draw array. Or are we actually? Because we can actually specify types. No, 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 no. If we're um, if it's not static, we're not. Um, we're not setting types. We just leave it like that. Okay. So then, apparently, this is this is now defined. So there's an argument. So let's just look for a stream. Um, is there anything ignorable here? Uh, yeah. Let's just say that draw array is ignorable for now. Just in case it generates code that isn't using it. Which is fair. Um, I'll come and I'll look explicitly to see if there are any cases where it won't be used later. Okay, so now we're inside. Um, at some point down here, it's going to get to the bit where you're actually drawing, and this uh, dispatches to two different functions. 
There's the drawer expander, which we've looked at before, and the compute expander, which dispatches a compute job. So I would actually need to change both of these to support multi-draw. Let's go and see what the compute expander actually does. Oh, there's a function called dispatch compute. Ah, so GL draw array is not going to be valid at all if it's compute. Um, okay. So what we actually need to do is we would want to say if it's compute, we'd want to um, assert not draw array. And here we would actually want to go to this and start use, using it. But before we start using it, I think I'm going to go and update map G to make sure it's ready to use this. So if I go um, map G, um, yes, these are going to be the arguments. And then it's going to expand to a fun call where the um, draw array is going to be nil. So that's going to be that. Um, what are we time-wise right now? Oh, half a night. God damn, that got, came along fast. Um, map G into uses map G. Map G into start also uses map G, so that's fine. We don't need to worry about that. Um, so map G is now updated to do this new thing. Um, and that will be correct. Then it's um, multi... Oh, come on, multi-draw. So... This actually simplifies this stuff a lot. Um, let's look at map G. Let's just copy it. Let's get rid of this comment for now. Um, let's with capital context that. Yes, that makes sense. Um, fun call the pipeline instead. In this case, we're also going to have the after the pipeline funk, we're gonna have the draw command array and then the stream and then the uniforms. And all we have to do is just pass it along. Draw command array. That's literally it. Multi map G, because we're moving all the logic inside the um, inside the um, pipeline function. So then all of this can go away. We don't need this, we don't need the uh, this stuff, nope. Um, we're not going to do map G. That's going to handle all the uniform setting. We're going to make sure that we've got the BAO bound. All of that stuff is going to be handled for us. Um, but then we're going to get to, oh, there's going to be a type case. Mm, I don't like this at all, actually. Because we're going to have to know what type of thing we passed in to set things up. It's not, doesn't feel good does not feel good, because that's going to slow shit down. But as long as it only slows shit down when you're using multi-draw, because yes, you're paying a slightly higher cost to set things up for the draw, but then you're going to be dispatching tons of stuff at the same time, because you're using multi-draw for that reason. So that should balance out the costs. Um, it's not ideal, but it's not terrible. Um, also, we need a struct for this, so def struct g um, in direct command. Um, yeah, it's going to be count uint32, or just uint, I suppose. Um, instance count first. Base instance. The nice bit as well, because it's Keppel and it's uh, def struct G, this will work with C arrays and GPU arrays. So that's all we need for the, uh, for the first part. Um, okay. Let's have a look. Um, Intel Spectre Meltdown comes to mind. 
talk to him. I'll see you, Reggie. But yes. Um, yeah, Enzo handled that really badly. It's like, yeah, you've got, you've got a problem. And your one might be slightly worse than some other people's. But still, you know, own it. Just handle it and get it done. Yeah. Anyway. Um, okay, so this is going to be multi-map. We need to take this stuff and then look at actually the depth pipeline. Oh, we took half an hour left. So basically we end up back here again, where we're actually in the draw dispatch and we're looking at whether to, um, at what to use. Looking at what to use. So we're actually gonna introduce another if again. So it's a good thing we got rid of one earlier because we're about to introduce another one. So at least, Less bad, I suppose. I don't know. Wait a second, though. Is there any way we can know this a bit better? No, not really. Um, because this is just a function, and it's not going to inline that function because it's massive. Um, it's not going to have a chance to constant propagate that nil. Because when we use map G, it's always going to set that argument to nil, um, which means if that was in line, then that could constant propagate and it could get rid of um, this if that we're about to add. But it is not to be. That's, uh, what am I doing? No, fuck the off right now. Uh, plus nil. Okay, so we, I, first thing to do, I guess, is if um, if draw array. And then we're gonna have to um, have to do this. It's a bit of a butt. It's a bit of a butt. Um, One of the things we do have in Keffel is there's a pattern of um, you have data sources, you, well, you, have, you have yeah places that store data, textures, buffers, and all that kind of stuff. And then when you're reading to them or writing to them, there are objects that help that. So if you're reading from a texture, you're using a sampler. If you're reading from a buffer for um, um, as a, as a um, if you're using a buffer as an input to a pipeline, um, you're going to take it, make it into a stream first. So you've got a buffer stream, you've got a samplers. So what we could do is we could say that there is a certain kind of like um, draw stream. So you would take your draw array, you would put it in a stream, and then um, that would allow you to, then you would pass that in. And because then we would have a single type for that, we'd always know what this type is. It would be that stream type, and we could abstract over the C array versus GPU array stuff on the creation of the stream, um, which could make things a little faster, which would make things a little faster, but just um, at the cost of an extra type. And then the user has to box this particular thing. And there are some potential small, um, some, some, some small costs there, yeah. Okay, so yeah, we should just do the ugly version and then we should fucking deal with it. Let's, uh, we'll get there, we'll get there. Let's take this, um, we don't need this with the AO bound there anymore. Um, oh yeah, by the way, I'm using uh, this um, reader conditional here rather than um, comments because then this is still uh, Lisp code. And um, when I use, um, Peredit and stuff like this, all those commands still work. So it's just a little nicer, like, it's not gonna, ex this, if I compile the whole file, this thing isn't gonna get compiled. Um, but if I control C, control C on it, that will compile it. And then we'll get some errors. Okay, so command array now is not command array. It's, um, what is it, uh, draw array? So we're basically going to take this and we're going to go and shove it up here. Get rid of this. Um, 
So mode is just going to be draw mode. That's fine. Um, idiot. Uh, stride is interesting. Um, if we say you have to use that other type, we do know the stride, don't we? Not necessarily. Let's go and have a look at the definition for that again, because there's something there. Stride specifies the distance in basic machine units between elements of the draw parameter array. Um, okay, yes. Then in that case, we kind of know the stride here. Um, it will be, yeah, whatever the size in bytes of um, that type is. So let's go and have a look. Um, let's just go to multi draw again. Just try and remind myself what this um, expands into, def c struct. Um, excuse me. Can we do, how do we get the size of this? CFI um, foreign type size. I'm not sure this is going to work just because um, of some of the fuckery I do <laughs> in those macros. Uh, let's just try this. No, it doesn't know about that. Um, and I guess it doesn't know about this either. No, okay, fine. Um, but what we can do is because we are providing this as part of Keppel, we can just rely on what the name will be, I suppose. This is great. Um, we should really have a function for doing this a better way. Um, let's have a look. What does it expand into? Define foreign type. Yeah, it's simple parser is indirect command. I would have thought that would actually work. Or work. Oh, wait a second. Of course it doesn't. Hold on. I'm in the wrong fucking package. Capital.pipelines. There it is. That's what I wanted. Works fine. Fine. So... We're using this, uh, yeah. We're calculating this at read time because the other file will already have been compiled. Um, and so we're gonna be able to look this up in CFFI. And that means we can hard code this value into this um, function, which may or may not have any kind of use, but I want that to be hard coded because we really don't wanna be looking up sizes at runtime because we don't need to. Um, so that's fine. What are we time wise? 37, fine, still a little time left. Um, These are certs we would want to remove um, under certain conditions. Um, we do have a concept of release mode, which is the goal for that in Keppel will be to strip out loads of um, checks. So basically you develop your game or whatever it is. Uh, so funny, I say this like people are actually gonna use this stuff, and whatever. I, I, you would, theoretically, make your game using Keppel, and uh, then at some point you go, cool, this works, it's tested, and you would put it into release mode, and then next time you do a build, it's gonna strip out loads of checks in different places. Like, uh, like we could remove a ton of stuff, like array bounds and all this kind of stuff, and making sure all these things in here are the correct um, like types and things like this, because you've tested it already with your game, so you don't need that anymore. Um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Like, uh, let's remove these asserts for now because it's just extra work to do in a limited amount of time. Um, we have draw mode is gonna be available, so that's fine. Um, CRA total size is there. Okay, so for the GPU array BB version, um, if you're passing in that, we want to set up this draw indirect buffer thing. Um, this, ooh, this is interesting because we have a VAO bound. When you bind a VAO, they become mutable. So they capture any bindings that happen within, while the, basically while the VAO is bound, if you bind things, uh, the VAO is going to store that binding information. 
Um, will it do that for this as well? Because that would suck. We don't want that to happen. Does that mean we need to move it outside? Um, so then we would have to do this. We would have to bring this down here. Oh, wait a second, let's just see. Oh yeah, that goes down to there. So then we would need to take this. We would need it. Where would we be? Oh, we would have to have it in like three places. We would have to have it here. We would have to have it here so we can actually do things before it. And we would need to have it um, here. Because all of these need to be AO bound. This needs to be AO bound, but it's going to need to set up something first. It's going to set up bound GPU. Um, is it called? Maybe GPU buffer bound? Yeah, let's try that. Um, the Keppel context? Where is the context, by the way? CTX sim. So this is the context, and the target is going to be not that. Why am I bringing up that? Draw indirect buffer. And this is going to be. The wait a second. Let's let's think this through. You passed in a GPU array, uh, which is the draw array, and so then let's jump to here. Let's jump to this type. Split screen. Bring that back. GPU array BB has a buffer um, field. So what we would do is we would say GPU array. Um, Actually, no, we probably don't need to do that. We just need to grab the buffer. Yeah, we just need to grab the buffer. That's actually correct. GP array, BB, buffer of draw array. Yes. And then this is going to get set on the context here, which is going to bind it. Um, and then we need to specify where in that buffer we're reading from. Indirect is interpreted. So indirect, which is the pointer, I believe. Yes. Suddenly, this doesn't become a pointer anymore. It becomes an um, index into a thing. So, yeah, if you're using this buffer, then indirect is interpreted, interpreted? Sure. as an offset in basic machine unit, bytes in this case, into that buffer, and the parameter data is read from the buffer rather than from your client memory. So a GPU array is a potentially a subset of a buffer. So we need to know where in that buffer the GPU array starts because that's where we're reading from. And that is stored in here as offset in bytes into buffer. Um, so then indirect, uh, no, this is, okay, here. Um, we would go GPU array uh, BB instance is draw array, okay. Here, this will be C array pointer, the draw array. Ugh. So much gum. But anyway, that's roughly what it needs to be. Okay, what am I missing? So it checks the type of the draw array. Um, if it's a C array, then we're gonna we're gonna get its pointer. We need its length to know. Yeah, how long and the elements are there. Um, I'm annoyed that a GPU array doesn't have a total size, like a total number of elements, so I'm going to need that to add that to GPU array as well. Um, and make sure that's always populated. Then, or at least populated whenever the dimensions are. Um, what else? But for now, we just take the first of dimensions of draw array. In fact, we can do. We can do at least do this. Can we, do we have a BB version of that? No. Um, this will be slightly faster than just dimensions because it knows that it's a kind of GPU array. 
Um, so it is just going to look up this struct. So it'll take the first element of this list. It'll once we've got the asserts in, we'll know that is a one-dimensional array, so it'll be fine anyway. Um, but what I want to do is, whenever you set dimensions, it should just reduce dimensions by multiply to give you the total number of elements and cache that on this object anyway. And then we don't have to compute it at draw time. Um, we just read it out of the struct. So, um, oh, thank you, sir. Metian is providing some info on, um, Vertex rendering and multi-array, draw multi-arrays indirect, so which I think is what we're looking at here. Uh, yeah, so this is the same one we were looking at, but it is very useful. And then multi-draw here is, um, yeah, this is the general idea of things here. So that's fine. That is That lines up with what I was thinking, so that's good. Um, Oh, oh, yes, no, this is what you was, uh, this is the VAO issue. Thank you, sir. This is exactly what I need to look at. Uh, the basic draw functions are all you really need to send vertices for rendering. How the number of ways to draw that optimize certain rendering case. Rendering with a different VAO from the last drawing command is usually a relatively expensive operation. So many of the optimization mechanisms are based around you storing the data with several meshes in the same buffer objects with the same vertex formats um, and other VAO data. Binding a VAO or modifying a, that just gave me an idea. So right now, when you make a buffer stream, um, you're creating a VAO. Um, and the VAO, its layout is specified by um, the GPU arrays you specify it for. Hold on. Because I was just wondering if, basically in certain cases, if you were reading from the same, if you were, if you were making a VAO, if you made two VAOs, and, but they were both reading from the same uh, GPU arrays, so the same buffers, they would have the same layout, and so you could use the same VAO, I, you could use the same VAO object from GL. And the reason that would be good is then, um, when you're binding it, you wouldn't have multiple VAOs um, with the same buffer bindings and the same layouts, but with a different ID. I can't think of a nice way of doing that that isn't really kind of game engine-y and nasty because basically then you need to have a cache of, um, of which GPU arrays you're making the VAO with, and you can look up into that cache and find an existing ID. Um, oh. But we should provide an option to create, or at least clone a VAO, sorry, clone a buffer stream, and have it use the same VAO from inside. So like a sh sharing the VAO ID um, between multiple buffer streams and that would be a performance improvement and that wouldn't be too that would be considered like an optimization thing then you could do to get more performance damn and again thank you that's a really good uh that put my head in a good place cool so i need to think about that too um finding a vao or modifying vao state is an also an ex is an expensive operation and there are many cases where you want to render a number of distinct meshes with a single draw call all of the meshes must be in the same vao and therefore um, the same buffer objects and index buffers. Um, also, of course, there must be the same shader program um, with the same uniform values. We, we're, we're done with that. That's already handled for us. To render multiple primitives from a VAO at once, use this, which is fine. Um, Multi-draw arrays. We're actually going to use... Um, we're using multi-draw indirect. Hmm. Come back to that. Um, I'm not sure why you'd want to use the non-indirect version of this over instancing. But anyway, yeah, it's interesting. Um, 
useful for circumstances where you know that you're going to draw a lot of separate primitives of the same kind that all use the same shader. Typically this will be uh, a single conceptual object that uh, you would always draw together in the same way. You pack all this vertex here in the same VO on buffers, yada, 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 good, good, good. So that's cool. And then we've got base index and instancing. We don't expose base vertex yet, but we need to. Um, it bugs me that I haven't done that yet, actually. That'll be one of the things we fix probably in one of these episodes. Um, range, combinations. What this doesn't tell me, unfortunately, is um, whether setting the um, indirect buffer is going to be captured in a VAR. So let's have a look to see if there is. So that's index array. I'm not interested in that nearly as much as I am in... Um, oh, no, vertex specification. Yes, that's exactly it. Okay. Um, Dun, 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 dun. The vertex array object um, is an OpenGL object that stores all the state needed to supply vertex data with one minor exception noted below. That'll be interesting. I wonder what that minor exception is. Um, stores the format of the vertex data, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We kind of know this stuff already. I want to know what the exception is. Um, remember, all of the state below is part of VAO state, except where it is explicitly stated that it is not. A VAO must be bound, um, etc. So, I'm interested in indirect. Is that in here? Oh, I don't mention it. God damn it. It's really annoying. I was hoping that would be the exception. Um, what is the exception then? Oh. Multibind. We saw multibind a second ago. Oh no, this is something else. Oh no, we searched for indirect already. And uh, I guess multi draw. No, it's not in there. Multi anything. No, it's just multi bind. Okay, that sucks. Um, so I really want to know if. Dun, 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 GL draw indirect buffer. Vertex array object. Vertex buffer object. Okay. Vertex format, component type. Ah. Uh, GL VAO indirect. Oh, look, here we go. The part of your own answer that describes the root cause of the problem makes a lot of sense. The GL draw indirect uh, buffer binding is indeed not part of the AO state. Woo, then it doesn't matter. This is confirmed by the spec. The corresponding state, da 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 da, is listed in table 23.5, caption vertex array data, not in vertex array objects. Sick. So we should confirm that. Um, so let's get events up and let's go and look for. Um, documents, let's look in graphics, let's look in specs. And we want the GL spec 4. Point, at least 4.2. Uh, let's take the 4.3 core. And let's take the draw and direct buffer and see what we find. Um, boo! What do you mean? Fucking, I hate searching PDFs. Um, Well then let's search for the thing they were talking about, which is um, vertex array data not in vertex array objects. Let's, let's see if that 
So you never know if it's actually not in here or it's just that the search is gashed. Here we go, look. Some rather fiddly to read. Do we have a rotate in here? That would be kind of nice. Rotate, right, here we are. So array buffer binding, draw indirect buffer binding, vertex array binding. Mm -hmm. Okay, primitive restart. Um, but yeah, this is what we needed to know. It's not part of that state. So when the VAO is bound, we won't be mutating the VAO by um, binding this thing. So that means we can actually put, we can put this back where it was, which was up here. Oot. With VAO bound, with VAO bound. Um, Okay, that's good. And so this should basically work. Um, it will mean that this is left bound, which I probably don't want to do. Nah, let's let's be good. Let's unbind it at the end. Um, it should be okay. In fact, it really should be. It should be okay to left, leave that bound actually. Um, when would that be a problem? It's in, draw indirect buffer is only used when you're doing uh, this multi draw arrays indirect stuff. So if th having that state set, no, we're going to remove this. And the advantage there is we're doing by not unbinding, um, we're not having to make that state change, which is cheaper. The only time we need to potentially change this is if we're about to use a different array. Um, the nice part here is if we if we do another um, if we do another draw call using the same array for the uh, draw arrays argument, then um, Keppel is not going to do that again. It, it caches the fact that of what is of what is bound, and it goes, oh, this uh, GPU array is already bound, so we don't need to do that. So then oh, it says this buffer is already bound, so we don't need to do that again. Um, so it should always be correct to do this. Okay, well, that's that. Um, so technically, that should be... That should be enough for all this to work. Um, let's go back to render and just recompile something, at which point, oh, there's no warnings yet. Let's recompile all of these. Let's just expand this to see if there's anything that... Now, I don't like the fact that we just made this even longer um, and we've returned this if, but I don't think there's no way around that right now other than have the... I mean, what you could do is you could have the stream object um, store a um, slot. So what, we, what you'd have to do is we'd have to make a stream um, object, a stream type for these draw, um, these multi, these indirect draw calls. Um, and then what we would do is in this, in the, in the stream object for this and the stream objects we use for the data, we would have a slot in there, uh, which is the dispatch function. So basically it would be this function. Um, that would actually be pretty cool Um, so you would have one more function call, but it would be correctly typed because we would know exactly the type of the function and we can specify that in the struct. So you'd be, you'd be chasing one function pointer basically and doing a call, which might not be that painful. Um, I'm not sure if that really works out cheaper. I mean, there's a, there's a few things that are coming into play here and they probably don't matter. Um, is the uh, oh thank you so much for uh, Median you're a star for um, linking the uh, Stack Overflow issue we were just looking at that's really good um, we've got more ifs than I would like so that's uh, again another branch but we've got branch prediction on the CPU so that I don't know how much difference that's really going to make I mean again this is like micro optimizing without measuring which is terrible um, also this function is massive so you can imagine that the um, the uh, instruction cache is going to be completely blown by this fucker. Um, so is it better then to have that function? Like, it, does it matter then that we've got an additional function call? I'm not really too sure. Um, yeah, I'm just not sure. I would have to measure and actually see. So it's better that we have an implementation here uh, that we can then deal with later. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's where we are with this right now. Um, so I guess the first thing to do is... Kill this, restart, make sure everything still runs. 
Um, let's just go into um, just see what the changes are so far. So we've got an un. Ooh, that's a good point. We added a file. Uh, we added multi draw. This guy here, but we haven't added that to the ASD. So let's do that. Um, and we know because it defines the type that it has to be before def pipeline. So let's put it here. So that's that. Um, what the fuck? Wait a second, this is our instance stuff. Instance. Instance. Um, oh, what a pain. Um, now I need to do the thing here for the instance count stuff, which is this part. Ah, why did the. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. Um, I might have to do this as one commit because I really don't want to pull this apart. Uh, it's lazy though, Chris. Very lazy. But never mind. Um, okay, let's go with this. Um, uh, multi draw um, and um, always use uh, instance. Draw fun. Um, draw dispatch. Thanks. Uh, yeah, okay, something like that. So now let's. Let's bring this back up again. Load, play with verts, and see if anything breaks. Um, and whoa, we've actually gone over time. Damn. Well, let's see if this runs. Um, I would quite like to do a draw call um, with this. But yeah, but maybe I should actually just get off because otherwise I'm going to run too long. So yeah, let's, uh, let's just check that this builds. If it does, we'll call it a day and I'll carry on hacking on this this evening. And so hopefully by next week, actually, I should be able to show, show this multi-draw stuff working. And then, yeah, that'll be good. Whoops. Right, so in, play with verts. And let's do play start. Let's bring that up. Doot, doot, doot. Come on, thing. Oops. Actually, let's do this slightly differently. Let's um, put this over here and let's put the code over here. Let's go reset FBOs. And yeah, it's still working, so that's good. And I think that's probably where we're gonna leave it for today. So, wow, that looks way laggier on the stream. But anyway, thank you so much for um, for hanging out. And um, sorry we didn't get something completely finished, but um, yeah, I really appreciate getting this time to, to work on Keppel, and it's nice to do that with you guys as well. That's always really motivating. Um, we'll have draw multi-draw working by next week and then we'll look at the next features we want to put in because there's a, there's a good few things in GL that are really cool that are kind of yet to come. So all right, thanks so much. I will see you next time if I was on the right machine to stop as usual. Ciao!